Good morning. This recording is for Sunday. Uh, this is Oct uh, for Sunday, October 25th. And uh, if you're shut in or can't, can't get to the service, uh, we'll have videos every Sunday, every Wednesday. Uh, we are having worship behind the church in our grass lot, the yard there, uh, Sunday mornings, 9.30. Uh, if you have a lawn chair, bring your lawn chair. We do have some folding chairs, uh, but it helps if some bring lawn chairs. Also bring your own water or coffee if you'd like. Uh, and then Tuesday night, Tuesday night, six o'clock behind the sanctuary. We, we had about a dozen people there praying on Tuesday night. We're, we're looking for more to come join us. And that's another time outside behind the church, six o'clock Tuesday night. Same thing, bring lawn chairs, bring water, bottle water, whatever. Let's, let's go to prayer. Uh, we, we just thank the Lord that we, things are beginning to open up. We're having an opportunity to get together and we will continue these Bible studies by video even when everything's opened up. Let's go to prayer now. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to open up your holy word. Lord Jesus, to receive this bread of life today. This is our manna for today. Yesterday's manna doesn't fit today. We need a fresh word. And so we pray, Lord, the anointing of your Holy Spirit, lead us through this message and deliver it by the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit, not by the frailty of man. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's blow the shofar and get into the word. <laughs> Praise God. Genesis, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1. We're going back to the beginning. We want to we wanna examine Adam and Eve and their relationship with the Lord, uh, the, the, um, all the promises, all the blessings that God had bestowed on, upon Adam and the authority given to Adam. So let's, let's go back to Genesis uh, chapter 1 and verses 26 through 28. Now, first of all, we need to establish the, the fact that Adam and Eve were created to have perfect fellowship with God while dwelling in his perfect garden that he had created for them. And then uh, in, in uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 26, we see that man is made in a special way, different than all the other creatures. Then God said, let us make man in our image and according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, over the cattle and all of the earth, over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created, created him, male and female, he created them. Then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every living thing that moves on the earth. So we see that God created man in his own image. What, what could that mean? What, what does that really mean? First of all, we, we, there are some things we can observe and, and we, we, we can know that, that we can have truth of what it means. First of all, God is a triune being. Man is also a triune being. God is uh, three persons or personalities, yet one God. Uh, and and that's, to some people, that's hard to understand, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, God, God is three parts, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but one God. Man, so if you're having trouble understanding the, the triunity of God or the three parts of God, yet one God, look in the mirror. You, man is one being made up of body, soul, and spirit. When you look in the mirror, you see one person. When, when I look at my wife, I see one person, but I know in that one person, there is the three parts of body, soul, and spirit. And so God gave, not, not only did God create man in his own image, but God gave man ability. He gave, he gave man uh, more than what other creatures, what the animals have. Uh, the ability to reason. He gave man personality. He gave man intellect. Uh, all of these are comparable to the characteristics of God. So man is made in God's own image. And, and twice in these verses, 
God grants man dominion and rulership over the earth. So God gave man intelligence. Uh, Adam was not this uh, caveman scratching his head trying to figure out how to make fire. He was a brilliant man uh, created by God to have dominion and rulership over the earth and applied to every living creature. So God delegated this authority to Adam. But sin and rebellion caused man to lose that rulership. Satan deceived Adam and Eve and when, when they sinned in the garden and man gave up his rulership when he sinned. And Satan gained it by deception. It's the same way he does now with lies and deception. That's how he causes people to sin and rebel against God through lies and deception. So having taken Adam's rulership, that's why many times you'll hear Bible teachers and the Word of God declare that Satan is called the God of this world because he stole man's uh, dominion, man's authority. God also gave Adam and Eve the ability to procreate. You see in these verses, God wants them to, he commands them, the first couple, to replenish the earth, to be fruitful and multiply. And so God's design for man and woman is a is really a microcosm or or, or, or a picture of the church. Uh, you, you see that in Ephesians chapter 5 when the Apostle Paul is comparing the husband and wife to the Lord and his church. And so God wants to, to display his glory uh, in the church, uh, first of all, through the, the marriage, through a bride and a groom. And, and the bride and the bridegroom is compared to the Lord and his church. And so it was then that uh, when God, God's blessing and promise of success in marriage depends on what? Unity. God's, God's blessing of success and, and promise in marriage depends on unity. God's blessing of success and promise in the church depends upon unity. And Satan is always working. He works overtime, especially in the day in which we live, to try to destroy the sanctity of marriage. And he also tries to destroy unity in the church. Have you noticed how many times uh, uh, rebellion will rise up in the church? Rebellion will try to cause divisions in, in congregations and so on. Uh, the, the enemy hates unity because where there's unity, there's power. God shows up when his people come together in unity. When a man and wife come together in unity, God shows up and blesses them. Man's great value in God's plan, man is, a, is distinct from the rest of creation, totally different from the rest of creation. The divine triune counsel of God determined that man was to have God's image and likeness. Man is a spiritual being, uh, not only body, but soul and spirit, He's not like the animals. Man is a moral being with intellect, perception, self-determination that far exceed any other earthly being. Man is created just a little bit lower than the angels. Look at Psalms chapter 8, verses 4 and 5. It says, What is man that you are mindful of him, and the son of man that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with your glory and honor. And then in Hebrews uh, chapter 2, verse 7, uh, it says, You have made him a little lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor and set him over the works of your hands. See, that's declaring that man was to uh, have dominion and authority over the works, uh, over the creative works of God. Uh, you have put all things in subjection under his feet. So mankind has a God-given worth and a value, uh, not only as part of the family of God, but as an individual being. Each, each creature, each man, each woman has an individual value before God, and God has a plan. God has a plan for every life that submits to him, everyone who surrenders to him. And, you know... Um, I was talking to a couple yesterday and they were talking about this, that uh, 
you know, people try to group all humanity into one big group and say we're all the children of God. Well, we're, we're all God's creatures, but not all are the children of God. The ones who submit to the plan of salvation, the ones who confess Jesus as Lord and Savior, are indeed the children of God. But all others are just God's creatures. Man's capacity and ability uh, constitute accountability and responsibility. So man has accountability, but he also has a responsibility. And we should never be pleased to dwell at a level of existence lower than what God intended for us. God has made it possible for us to dwell at a higher level. We should always strive to be the best we can be and reach out for the highest levels of spiritual fullness that we can reach. And we should never say, well, I'm just, I'm just part of the family of God. I'm no big deal. You are, God has an excellent plan for you to, be, to, uh, to walk in and to minister in. To do less is to be unfaithful to the stewardness of the life given us by God. He's given you a life and he's given you the ability to live at a higher spiritual level than you are right now. Strive for that excellence, the spiritual level. Uh, don't settle for less and understand that you have a special place in God's plan. In Psalm 139 verses 13 and 14, he planned us. It says, for you are formed in my inward parts and you covered you you formed my inward parts and you covered me in my mother's womb i will give you praise for i'm fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are your works that my soul knows very well so the lord is a he's our master creator he made us perfectly the way he desired to fit into his plan he made you the way you are he made you the height the the the, uh, the, the stature, the structure, the personality, everything to fit into his plan for you. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. So God had more in store for Adam than just to become a man. He, has a, he had a plan for him. And God, in, in verse, uh, uh, chapter 2, verse 18, and the Lord said, it is not good for a man to be alone. I will make a helper comparable to him. And then verse 22, it said, that same chapter says, then the rib which the Lord had taken from Adam, he made it into a woman and he brought her to the man. And so you have the creation there of Adam and Eve, each human is so unique and has great value to God and has a place in the plan of God. Man is made from the dust of the ground, but he is unlike all other creatures. Uh, in in, uh, in uh, verse seven says, God breathed into the nostrils, the breath of life. Man became a living being. Mankind became the crowning act of creation. And God literally breathed his breath into man and gave man life. So after all the creation that God uh, created, man is the crowning glory of all his creation. So unlike the rest of creation, a human being has been created in covenant relationship with God. God had a covenant agreement that man would live in the garden uh, under his authority, under his protection, under his provision, but under his rule also. Uh, God literally breathed life into man. We live and move and have our being because we have the breath of God in us. God has given mankind an exceptional, high, distinct value and destiny. The likeness of man to creator, to creator uh, is that he's made in the likeness and image of God. God designed the human personality to consist of self-consciousness, self-determination, both the freedom and the awareness to respond to God and, and to respond to other human beings. Animals don't respond to God. Man responds to God. God has also de designed 
a destiny for man far higher and nobler than any other creature. He has an eternal destiny. He has an eternal plan for you. That you are you are not just going to go on into eternity. He has a plan for you to reign and rule with him throughout eternity. When God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness, he planned from the foundation of the world a glorious future for those who would choose the redeeming grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And understand, the plan of salvation was in place even before Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And then uh, we want to look at Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. So you and I who are living today, 6,000 years after Adam and Eve, are cho were chosen, we were chosen before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him, Ephesians 1 and 4. Having predestined us to adoption as sons. He, he pre-planned to adopt us as his sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Our adoption is possible through the offering of the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who gave himself on the cross and, and paid the price of punishment for our sins. Now we can be brought into fellowship with God and we can realize the fullness of the adoption that was predestined or planned before the foundation of the world. I know this is a lot to take in. It's, it is be, it's beyond our human understanding because God, God is. He always was, he always will be, and he had all of this pre-planned before the world was formed. That, just, that should blow you away right there. To the praise and the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. And how are we made accepted? By the blood of Jesus, because of the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ. Adam, in God's garden, is joined by his wife. Let's go to chapter 2, um, uh, chapter 2 and verse uh, 15. Let's see. Then the Lord took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden, verse 15, chapter 2, verse 15, to tend and to keep it. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you may, eat, you may freely eat, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in that day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. And the Lord said, he, the Lord was talking about spiritual death here and the beginning of mortality, because man was not supposed to uh, die. And the Lord God said, it's not good that a man should be alone. I'll make a helper comparable for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field, every bird of the air, brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. Whatever Adam called each creature, that was its name. Adam had the, had the understanding, the intellect, the intelligence, to, to recognize the animal and to give it a proper name. And Adam gave names to all the cattle, to the birds of the air, to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place. Then the rib which the Lord had taken from Adam, he made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woe man because she is taken from man. Therefore, Adam, Adam, the man, therefore man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Look at this. And, and, and something that a lot of people overlook is Adam and Eve, they began life as adults. There was no birth. There was no childhood. They were created fully grown, fully mature. So they began the fullness of life at their creation. Uh, and there was no, no birth necessary. Uh, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 3. And, and let's go over to uh, verse 1. 
and we see the de deception, the temptation, and the fall of man. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field, verse 1, uh, that, which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, God has indeed said, you shall not eat of the you shall not eat of every tree in the garden. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat it, nor you shall touch it, lest you die. And the serpent said to the woman, you will, you will not surely die. There's a lie. There's the enemy lying right there. And so he uses deception. Uh, he says, you'll, become, you'll, you'll, you'll gain knowledge, you know, you'll become like God, What's well, the same thing, the pride, the same thing that caused uh, Lucifer to fall. Then the eyes, uh, uh, so, so when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and the tree desirable to make one wise, she took the fruit and ate it. See, she desired to be wise, so she was, again, trying to be like God, like Lucifer did in heaven. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves coverings. They were not just trying to cover their nakedness, they were trying to cover their sin. They were exposed uh, not only for their nakedness but, but uh, because of their sin. And they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. And the Lord called to Adam and said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in, 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 in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I commanded you that you should not eat? And the man said, here, here, here begins the cover up. Well, they had already begun the cover up by sowing the fig leaves. And he says, Adam says, the woman you gave gave to be with me. She gave me of the tree and I ate it. Well, she did, but Adam sinned. Adam knew better than to take that. Even if that woman had offered him the tree, the fruit from the tree, he, he knew not to do it. And the Lord says, what is this you have done? And, and then uh, the woman says, the serpent deceived me and I ate. She was telling the truth. The serpent deceived her, but she sinned. And so and we go on, and uh, I want you to notice something. They tried to cover themselves. They tried to cover their sin. They tried to hide from God and cover, their, cover them, their, themselves. But God had a plan. And even before the foundation of the world, the blood of Jesus was planned to cover sin once and for all. Adam called his wife's name Eve because she was the mother of all living. Also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. So they tried, to, they tried to cover their sin with leaves, but covering sin requires a blood offering. God sacrificed two animals and took the bloody skins and covered Adam and Eve. They literally, the offering, the blood offering covered them. Uh, I'm sure they, they washed that off later, but Initially, that was a blood offering that covered their sins because the, the leaves could do no good as far as covering sin. Now, in Hebrews chapter 9, let's look at that real quick. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 22. According to the law, almost all things are purified with blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. And this is where blood offering comes in throughout the Old Testament, leading up to the offering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there's no covering of sins. Now, uh, let's go back, and I want to close with this. In Genesis chapter 5, we see the book of the genealogy of Adam, the, the verse 1. The day God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He made them male and female, blessed them and called them mankind the day that they were created. Adam lived 130 years and begot a son in his own likeness after his image named Seth. And after Seth, uh, the days of Adam were 800 years and he had sons and daughters. So all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. 
Adam and Eve knew that they had sinned. They were sorry for that sin. And they taught their offspring to obey God. That there was, there was a season there of offspring of Adam uh, obeying God. We see one, the seventh from Adam, Enoch, obeyed God in such a way that he was caught up. He didn't even die. God loved him so much, he just took him up. Uh, God killed the animals, covered the sin, and that began this whole process of teaching mankind that it required a blood offering to cover sins. There you have the Day of Atonement coming in later, the law and the Day of Atonement where a blood offering would cover the sins of Israel for a year and then another offering would be offering offered on the Day of Atonement. All of this was practiced until the cross. At the cross of Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ offered himself as the Lamb of God. He's not only our great high priest, he's not only our intercessor in heaven, he was also the Lamb, the offering that was given to cover our sins. So Adam and, Adam and Eve repented. They teach the generations after them about obedience to God. Can you imagine 930 years of, of regret that, of, over what they had done? Um, and they re, I'm sure they recalled, I'm sure when Adam was 930 years old, he was recalling the wonderful time that they, would have, that they had in the garden that they would have continued to have without sin. But God had a plan. God had a plan for mankind. And that plan is still in motion today and just as powerful as it ever was. The blood of Jesus covers all sin. To any who come to the Lord and say, here I am, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life and be Lord of my life. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Lord Jesus, we, we pray for any of those right now that are confessing you as Lord and Savior, giving their life to you. We pray for the church that we'll, we'll never forget the power of the blood of Jesus to wash away sin, to cleanse man from all sin and evil. Lord, we give you thanks for eternity. For eternity, we're going to thank you for what you've done. And we, Lord, we bless you. We give you glory and honor, and we pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Don't forget, tomorrow morning, 9.30, behind the church, worship service, Tuesday night, 6 o'clock, prayer meeting. God bless you.